Well, folks, on our Military Collectors TV series, I know it's been long anticipated. Eight plus years I've been working on this WC-53 Dodge carry-all, okay? I've posted along the way pictures. We'll do some more just from a historical perspective. But listen, before I show you the rest of the vehicle, it is absolutely done. It's pristine. I've got to thank several people. First, I've got to thank Lindsey Orr from Florida who did all the body work and all the paint work first. We actually did it in reverse, as you may remember, before I did all the engine. Then I brought that thing back up here to South Carolina, put it in the shop, thought that I would be able to do a little bit more restoration. Didn't do that. It sit here for about four years just piddling with it. And I loaded it back up on a trailer, took it to Brunswick, Georgia, and my good buddy down there who sells uh, WC and Dodge, he is a Dodge expert down there. You might catch some of his parts on eBay. Uh, Frank Unger, uh, he goes by Flathead, and I will tell you, he put this thing back together for me a little over a year and a half ago, and I had to bring it back up because of the electrical wiring and all that sort of stuff. And then Dave Cartledge and his crew down at the Military Vehicle Collectors Club of Columbia, here in Columbia, South Carolina, Dave and his crew wired it all up. And I tell you what, it is what it is right now. Um, I just got it back. I had the brakes all redone again. Uh, a good friend of mine who helped me start this about eight years ago, Doc Jeremy Crane, who is a first-rate mechanic here in Columbia. So with all of that, I had to thank all those guys on this video because without them, listen, this thing would not be where it is today. Oh, and by the way, Dave Swartz uh, with Delta decals up in Michigan, all of these decals that you see here. Uh, and you want to know about any of these folks, just send us a note on our Facebook page or Military Collectors TV, and, and we'd be more than happy to, to give you a preferred vendor list here. Um, but let's, let's talk first about the engine, okay? I want you to see the engine because I had a few modifications to this thing, okay? First of all, I did not do the generator uh, and put it back. I put an alternator kit, and that's uh, courtesy of the folks out at Vintage Power Wagons out in Iowa. And then the starter. I had a friend of mine here in Columbia who actually sent off to a company and had this starter put in here that's all in one, okay? There's no separate Bendix and all of that sort of thing because a lot of times when these things won't start, that Bendix won't kick when the flywheel turns and you're stuck. You got to go in there and manually do it. So I fixed all that and put a, a new upgraded starter on there. So with all of that, the Perktronics electronic kit, um, again, this is a T214 engine. It's all um, been restored and redone. And actually this engine had to be pulled back out of here because the mains and the rod bearings and all that stuff um, somehow got all discombobulated. And we had to pull that back and Dave Cartledge and his guys did that again. And then we had to change all the bearings out in the engine and put it back in there. So it's, been, it's just been one of those things that it happens, okay? I'm not a mechanic, you know that. I love these things. Uh, and I love those guys that turn them wrenches, okay? Let's talk one particular thing here. Let's look inside. Um, a lot of you guys that have these vehicles, um, you want to put them back into the leather material at which some of them came. It was kind of a red or a burgundy. There ain't nothing better, and I got all this canvas material from the folks at Beechwood Canvas, and I had these uh, custom made. And so I bought all of the, the material from them and then all the foam, and then I had a local upholstery shop here in Columbia do all that. But with that, all the gauges are correct in here, even the voltmeter um, that's up there. It's all the, the correct. I had that restored by Bob's um, up in Mich Michigan as well. And again, I've kind of done all of this along the way, um, but you know, it's just one of those labors of love and a lot of money, okay? These things, yeah, they only made 8,400 of these during World War II, um, you know? And so the WC series was on a three-quarter platform after about 1941. So this is basically the same as the WC-54, the ambulance, and, but they put a different body on it. So everything else is pretty much the same. With that, that's going to be this segment. And then we're going to continue to look at more of the WC-53 carry-all restoration that I did on the next segment for Military Collectors TV. Stay one, ready and check. Roger that.